What is on every man's mind, especially just like Asian men? And it is, Chan, does size matter to girls? Hey guys, it's JT Tran, the number one Asian dating coach. And today I have a very special guest, Shan Booty. Yay! A famed sexologist. Yes! Okay, so, <laughs> <laughs> we've been talking about this earlier. What is on every man's mind, especially just like Asian men? And it is, Shan, does size matter to girls? I'm gonna bounce this question back to you. Does boob size matter to you? Yes. All right, <laughs> some people, it doesn't matter to them. I think it's the exact same thing when it comes to penis size. Anatomically, uh, the primary sexual organs a woman, ha organs a woman has is the clitoris, which is on the outside. Uh, it's exactly in the same position that the penis is because mm -hmm. they are homogenous. They're basically the same, but just slightly different. Ours is like an iceberg and yours is an elephant trunk, right? <laughs> um, Love but, that analogy. No, wow. thank you very much. Um, the G spot, which is the homologous to the prostate, that is two inches in and a bit forward towards the belly button. And most people have a two inch penis. So mm -hmm. the whole debate of whether or not uh, the size of a penis can satisfy is pretty much null and void because everybody usually can hit those two markers, the outside mm -hmm. and just the very shallow inside. But the cervix also has a cluster of nerve endings, which is about eight inches for the average woman's uh, vaginal canal. And there's like a pleasure pain element that comes with that. Some people like that. Some people don't like that. Okay. Some people don't care for it at all. I personally could give zero fucks about penis size. I could care absolutely no, like zero, zero at all. And my favorite book is uh, She Comes First by Dr. Ian Kerner. Okay. And that was a book written from a man who suffered from erectile dysfunction. And so he was like, I feel inadequate as a man. So he learned everything he could about female sexual anatomy in order to get the best he possibly could. And he found that his sexual dysfunction actually in many ways aided in the process because he was able to focus more on the woman. And it was easier for him to orgasm and maybe he came a little too quick, but that wasn't an issue because what she really needed was more foreplay. And he came up with the phrase foreplay is core play. But you can't negate the fact that some people just like it. Right, right. And, you know, you can talk about like Hollywood media, porn says like, hey, size matters. Um, but you're saying like to women, it's an individual choice. Yeah. And size matters because it matters to you. Like, same with boob size. Mm -hmm. Do bigger boobs really do anything extra? They're nice to look at, though. Right. And they have become like a commercial commodity because we have hyped them up. But small boobs do the exact same thing. Get the same, get the same bang for your buck. <laughs> get the same mileage. <laughs> right, yeah. Same good, same stuff. <laughs> okay, so whether it does, does not matter is individual choice. But let's talk about the guys. Okay, maybe they're concerned. Maybe, you know, they're not the most sexually inex you know, experienced. What can they do to make sure whether they're big or small to satisfy their woman? The number one thing is approach everyone's body like a tourist, not a tour guide. Tourist, and I think tour that guy, takes yeah. a lot of pressure off. When you're not in there like, I have to have five moves that are killer. If you approach every person like, what do you like? What feels good to you? Like, does this feel good to you? Or does that feel good to you? Like understanding what their touch language is, what pressure they like, and then creating a system based on that. I would say what makes me a great lover is the fact that I don't think I'm a great lover. I don't walk into any bedroom being like, all right, the box said get sliced and diced. <laughs> I walk in there like humble and curious and excited for the experience, and excited to learn. And so I think that's the key ingredient to being a good sexual partner, because I could tell you, it's like two thirds of women orgasm um, from clitoral stimulation mm -hmm. and one third orgasm from penetrative. There's obviously some crossover, people who can do both. So I can't tell you that going in there and giving amazing oral is going to work because for one third of women whose clitoris is too sensitive, they may not enjoy that. Okay. On the contrary, you know, going in there with like an incredible stroke game and knowing you could last for 40 miles might be great for one partner, but for, you know, two others, that's just not exactly what the main event is. Um, but by and large, it's just like, get to know what works for them and do that. And there's zero way of knowing what works for somebody other than asking them. So you're saying communicate in the bedroom. So like, can I, like, what is the like sort of like a smooth way of asking without being kind of like coming off as like a little bit inexperienced? You just like ask straight up, like, what you know, what do you like? You want you want me to go down on you? What? Like this or that is fun, and yeah. doing both confidently. 
you know what I mean? Like it's you start even like with a kiss on the neck. Like, do you like a flat tongue lick on your neck? Don't use the description. Do it. <laughs> do you like a flat tongue? Um, do, you, do you like a flat tongue on your neck, or do you like a flick? Um, do you like? This is a website called Oh My Gosh Yes, and I think all men should actually go and check that out. And it gives nine different descriptive ways for women to describe how they orgasm on their clitoris. And so some people like orbiting, which is moving around. Some people like consistent, and I'm a consistent person, so. If you're doing something that I like, I'm like, I like that. You're like, oh, great. I have another idea. I'm like, ah, wrong answer. <laughs> I like that one course. thing. But some people like surprise. Yeah. They like it to be sporadic. Some people like rhythm for it to be like up, up, across, up, up, across. And so it has nine different ways to describe the way women like to be stimulated. And so when you have those language and those tools or you know those, you can do a better version of this or that. Because it is like the woman who likes orbiting is not going to like consistent on the actual clit. She's gonna want you to move around and suck on the lips and massage the mons pubis. She's gonna want that. And you're just not gonna be able to guess that by looking at her. Got you, nine, I had no idea. Right, right. right. But if I told them, I'm sure one for you would be like, that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's my go-to move. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, you met, you had a phrase or from someone else, like foreplay is corporate. That's Dr. Ian Kerner. Right, right. So for the guys who might not be lasting very long, mm -hmm. like, you know, I would say like, you know, you spend maybe on average like 20 minutes just getting her prepped up. What tips do you have for guys when it comes to getting her prepped, doing the foreplay, the, the core play? Don't go directly to the genitals, mm -hmm. right? Don't just start like foreplay doesn't mean oral sex. Foreplay is all the things that lead up to it. And that includes texting before. That includes when you walk in the bedroom saying like, you look incredible. I will say this, uh, my manager, who I talk about sex with a lot. So he comes up to me, he was like, Shan, do all women tell guys they have big dicks? And then he was like, every woman has told me that. And then I was talking to my friends and they said, every woman has told them that. Like, do, do girls just say this? And I'm like, yes. And you know what you should just say? You taste amazing. Oh, Nobody tastes wow. like you. Like you are delicious. Like that's foreplay to me. Like getting someone confident, the number one sexual arousal tool a woman has is her perception of herself. So for men, it's like they like to be visually stimulated. Women have to be internally stimulated. And that doesn't mean like, you know, make her, make her feel smart. It means make her feel hot. And if you can tell she's not feeling sexy, start giving her a ton of compliments. Like that's foreplay to me. Being like, your breasts look incredible. I mean, not yours, but you know, like <laughs> you're, I let you got your toes done. That's so sexy. Like I can't wait to like lick your toes. It's like praise and dirty talk isn't like, you know, porn talk. Dirty talk for a woman is praise. Okay. Um, so start with that and then tease. Teasing is a massively big tool. Um, just light strokes. It could be head massage, it can be ear. An easy thing that I love to do is like bust out the coconut oil and give someone a full body massage and then end with the genitals. By the time you get there, there's so much blood in that area. There's so much anticipation. You end up having to spend so much less time down there. So not only is it a better experience for them, but if you know that stamina wise may be hard for you to like tongue someone down for 30 minutes, uh -huh. um, doing all that pre stuff shortens that time. Gotcha. So let's say our inexperienced guy has done his foreplay, uh, his core play, done the, the coconut body, um, has gone down, done whatever sort of strokes, uh, you know, consistent, sporadic, yeah. <laughs> all the different nine ways, right? And now he's inside and like, he's, he's worried that he's not gonna last long. You have any tips for that guy that is, you know, he doesn't want to be a one minute man, but he's, he's not that super experienced? I, I kind of just say own it. It's also too like communicating with your partner what matters to them because some people it actually doesn't matter at the length of time mm -hmm. and so you're putting all this stress on yourself and you're taking yourself out of the experience because you're worried about something that actually is inconsequential to them but if it is for your own pleasure and you want to last longer and change positions mm -hmm. right condoms are an incredible tool people could be using I'm surprised they don't use like there are thicker condoms right like Trojan makes one in particular that's called extended pleasure yeah. and it's a thicker condom that is designed to desensitize the penis and so that you're able to be in there longer. Uh, a tip that they use if people have erectile dysfunction is they ask you to pull out and pinch the end until the sensation goes away. Okay. So almost like a slight painful pinch, yeah. um, but keep practicing that to get the endurance up. But the easiest way is change positions. Or it's like, 
I love, this is something that my partner does, shout out to you. Um, <laughs> he'll like do oral, then penetrate, then do oral, then penetrate. And so the whole experience just feels longer and you're getting a lot of variety in it. But also if he's penetrating and like, oh crap, I'm getting there, I don't wanna get there. Let me pull out and still continue to pleasure her without her like being any of the wise work. I know what you're doing, but <laughs> I, I like it's, that. It's good. It's, it's great, good. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these have been some great tips. Uh, one last golden tip that you can tell like any of our audience that's watching right now, what can you tell them? Um, combine pleasure, combine sensations. So, you know, doing this and this at the same time, right? It creates something interesting. And so mm. while you're even penetrating. So really quickly, it's like kind of like scratching and then sort of like. Well, I wouldn't suggest that, but you know what I mean? Like, don't yeah. like, don't go in the bedroom and be like, you like that. I just <laughs> mean in general, uh, nerve endings is a cluster of nerve endings wherever two joints connect. So like your wrists are really sensitive, your armpits, like your neck is really sensitive, like right here is sensitive behind your knees. And so if you combine sensations of both, like even while you're giving oral, pressing your thumbs behind the knees and uh -huh. massaging. So that's also, I think, a tip for longer term partners where it's like, we've done all the exciting, because when you start having sex with someone, you have dopamine, dopamine on your side. Yeah. It's exciting, it's new, it's kind of dangerous. Like your chemicals are aiding in this experience feeling better. But after a amount of time, your body's like, oh, this person again, we're just, <laughs> we, know, we know what to do. And so they're less excited by it mm -hmm. mentally, even if you're excited to be there. So that's when you start trying to like combine things. Like, I think if I'm, uh, with my partner and he's penetrating he's about to orgasm i'll give him a head massage during it's the combination of right. two things um at the same time there are different sensations that can really bring somebody over the edge no I, I love that tip because i think as guys especially those of us who are like linear thinkers that we tend to concentrate on one thing and losing sight of like hey i could add in like you know, like i said the, the head massage or the rubbing, you know, in a more sensitive area. So I, I love that tip. Um, thank you so much, Shan. Now, Shan, how can our audience find more about you? I mean, you know what? I just think look up, uh, you look up Shan Booty, but I love men who take sex seriously. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's enough men out there because there's so much ego and pride oh, yeah. um, and false bravado that is fed to them through porn. So when I meet a man who reads a book, goes to, oh my gosh, yes, the website, which I'm not affiliated with, but just goes and learns something that's so hot to me. So that would be my one like hope that after watching this video, you guys go to get one extra resource. Okay, and you're actually coming out with a, a book, maybe sometime in the future, I don't know if you keep that quiet. Yes. Uh, I don't know if it has a title, but you guys be sure to check out her YouTube. We'll put the link. Uh, and then whenever your your book comes out, you're gonna be in my book. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Shan. And bye, guys. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back.